When I first came to Atlanta, my office was in the Candler Building. And at noontime, I'd go to the downtown Y. There was a track on top of that old Y. The governor, then an aspiring attorney, was on that top track. And that's where I first met Carl. The year that I was getting out of law school was the last year of Governor Sanders' term as governor. And he had decided that he wanted to start a law firm and hire a couple of young lawyers. And he hired me as the first lawyer in his law office. I worked with him for over 40 years. Governor Sanders loved the YMCA from the time that he was a young boy from Augusta, Georgia. It was there that he really started understanding his athletic abilities, but then also it was his first place for employment because he was a camp counselor at the Y. He says all the time, you know, back in my early years, I just didn't even know the positive impact the Y was having and shaping my life at that time. He felt like that made such a huge difference in his life that it's exposed him to a lot of the positive core values of the Y, it exposed him to athletics, that led to him playing football in Augusta, and that led then to a football scholarship at the University of Georgia. He just felt like the YMCA had made a huge difference in his life growing up. He continued to work out at the Y throughout his life. He had developed a wonderful feeling about a little YMCA building in downtown Atlanta known as the Lucky Street YMCA. I think some of the happiest days that I ever saw Carl Sanders was going to the YMCA. I, I'm pretty sure that it reminded him of the facility that he had known as a child in Augusta. And Governor Sanders felt it was so important to support the Y simply because of the positive benefits that it had provided to him growing up. He had seen what a difference it made in his life and he wanted that, those same opportunities to be available to other young kids. We don't have to guess about how he felt about the YMCA because he made it so clear so often. He told me one day that he had been making personal history notes and he had his yellow pad and he had written in his left-handed cursive, important influences in my life. And he listed five of them. And number one was the YMCA. The fact that he put the YMCA at the top of his list of important influences in his life says a lot about the value that he attached to his more than eight decades of involvement with the YMCA. After the governor passed away, my phone rang and it was Betty Sanders. And she said, Kristen, you know how much the Y meant to the governor. And I said, yes, ma'am, I did. And she said, he's left the Y $1 million to ensure even after he's gone that the Y can continue giving and making a difference in others' lives. Most everybody applies the term leadership to Governor Sanders, and two of the qualities that I think that contributed a lot to his leadership were personal discipline and dignity, and that was certainly a part of his character, part of his leadership. His experience with the Y shaped the way he viewed much of life. The Y represented the whole community. Governor Sanders never thought of himself as a great civil rights leader, but he thought of himself as somebody that believed in basic fairness. A few days after he became governor, Senator Leroy Johnson, a young African-American senator, came in the governor's office and said, Governor, there are still signs by the water fountains in this very building, and this is uncomfortable for me. And Governor Sanders said, you're right. We're going to do something about that. And that night, Governor Sanders got the head of the building authority, and they simply took down all of the signs in the Capitol and the state buildings. We've come a long way in Georgia in the last several years and changing that whole philosophy. Long way. I have always thought that that says so much about his approach to basic fairness. Carl Sanders was one of a kind. The Sanders family why? is one of the great, great examples of how a leader recognizes the why and how the why recognizes a leader. He would always ask, what's going on at my why? Tell me about my why. Are we still serving everybody? Does everybody still have access to my why? He appreciates what the why stands for and what it can do for people that are young, old, rich, poor, black or white, if given a chance.